me, it was my first time to be out there and see how many people come, sold out, and the people that responded, the songs they responded to was crazy. Nah, I didn't expect it at all. I expected 200 people to be there. They didn't even have a pre-sale ticket. I was expecting 200 people to be in the area. 100 people know the words, you know what I mean? But it was crazy. I can't even, can't even act humble on that one. It was crazy. Um, for the most part, yeah. Because, I mean, I put a lot of work in my music and I go hard, so I expect something good to come out of it. Yeah. I wouldn't be doing it if I didn't expect. I wouldn't be, um, you know what I mean? A hobby is cool, but I got a family to support, and I can't just be playing around with a hobby all day. Yeah. You know, so I was expecting something good. Um, that was all suiting me up to now, to get to gear up for now. Even HSC, Habits and Contradictions, is, it just geared me up for the debut and more of the future work that I'm about to do with Black Kippy and, you know, the rest of the fellow artists in the industry, so. Um, honestly, we just four loser dudes at the time. We was losers at the time in the studio. Like, we losers, so we're gonna be losers, and we're gonna name ourselves that, and we came up with Black Kippy, and we free thought. We don't care about nothing. Then we're gonna make our music the way we wanna make it, whether you like it or not. You know, not saying that in a bad way, but we're gonna do us at all times. No, nobody's gonna change us. You know, that's what it stands for. Um, it was just a, uh, you know, in the studio thing, like, hey, we black hippie. You know what I mean? Like, and then we threw out a song and people was attracted to it and people started attracting themselves to it and it was just, it just took off from there. And we started giving our individual projects and kept building the buzz. You know, everybody wants the album. Uh, I was depressed. It was like a, a depressed record, like something that I just needed to say, cause I never, that whole record was to tell my homie that, you know, I'm sorry about his son, cause I never, like this one of my closest homies and I never told him like, sorry for losing your kid, you know what I mean? Like, I don't do funerals, like, I don't go to funerals and stuff like that. Like, I didn't even contact him about it. I just left it alone, like, you know what I mean? I was like, how can you call her? You know what I'm saying? I'm sitting there with my daughter and I call him, hey man, I'm sorry man, you just gotta keep going. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't want to tell him nothing like that, so I would just like, just put it in a song. And plus the people are like it. Um, I mean, a record makes, I could say anything I want on a record and it feel safe about it, you know what I mean? But. I mean, that's what music do. You go in there and you you let, you let be your real self, you know what I'm saying? Like some people go in there and they be fake and people don't really catch on to everything they're saying because it's not really coming from you. He could be saying some tight, ill lyrics, but you're not really feeling them because it's really not him. When somebody's really feeling it, you can hear the emotion, you can hear the passion in their voice and the way they deliver their music, so. Dave is a weirdo, I say that all the time, like, dude come from nowhere to not making beats to just making a beat that can make an album is a weirdo. <laughs> Tupac All Eyes On Me and West Side Connection was the first my mama brought me, but I remember I think this was summer of 8th grade or 7th grade, I brought um, Eminem, Marshall Mathers LP. That was with my own money that I brought. That was my first regular money. Um, I mean, M was crazy. I really don't remember too much. You know, I really couldn't understand the, st the shit he was kicking. Like, I listen to M now, it's old shit, and it's like, this nigga's crazy. Like, he was rapping like this back then, you know what I mean? Like, it, it flips me out and shit, but I was just into the singles and shit. I wasn't really into the whole body work of the music. I was just into the singles and, you know, shit like that. The wave that was going on. Um, studying rappers and being hungry and competing with each other. Like most rappers, this you listen to rappers now, they don't even talk shit. Like rappers don't even think they hard. Like 
You hear a rapper come in, he'll walk, he'll walk in the room and then big up this other rapper the whole 30 minutes. Like, damn, nigga, like, you ain't tight. You know what I'm saying? Like, niggas ain't, niggas ain't competitive no more. That's the difference between us. Like, we go in the, we go in the studio, we play a record and I tell that nigga, your shit ain't fucking with my record. Or he be like, your shit ain't fucking with my record. You know what I'm saying? Niggas is just too nice. That's how I feel. So competition, y'all got competition in the squad? Yeah, at all times, you know at all I'm times. Saying? I think I'm the best, so I think you the best. Dot think you the best, Rock think you the best. At all times, you have to. If you don't think you the best, then you need to go to the house. For real, though. Like, for real. Go to the house. <laughs> <laughs> go to the house. We ain't fucking with you. You ain't, you ain't ready. Nah, it still is. Nah. What about Nas? I mean, I, I related to everything he was talking about, you know, Project Window. I was not from the project, but just the visual of everything he kicking and his homies, you know what I mean? And he just brought the real to everything he was talking about. Like his mother bringing his mother into the situation from even beefing with Jay-Z. That, that was some of the best diss records you ever heard from Jay-Z and Nas, you know what I mean? Like, Nas is the man. Favorite Nas record is probably Stillmatic, It Was Written, and I Am. I'm like tied between them three. But I'll probably have to go with It Was Written if I had to choose. But It Was Written, I Am, and Stillmatic. Pretty my favorite. Producer, we got a few of those. We got Dre, High Tech. We got, man, Soundwave, Tay Beast. Willie B, <laughs> you know what I mean? There's plenty of them. Mm, I was I was born into it. I really don't know for sure. My cousin, he had the uh, buggy back in the day, and I used to be with him all the time. He was like my father figure because I don't really have no pops around. He was only like 10 years older than me and shit. We used to go around, you know what I mean? I used to go to his football games in high school. He had the buggy and shit. He played for Crenshaw. And he used to just play rap music all day, you know what I mean? And that's probably what broke me in. That's probably why I was really into Mob Deep and Biggie and shit like that at a young age. And Nas and shit. And I was telling niggas I like Nas, they was like, who the fuck is that? You know what I mean? Niggas is like Dog Pound, Westside Connection, Tupac. That's all niggas knew at my age, you know what I mean? So I was just trying to be different. Um, it's cool. I'm trying not to go to jail this time. <laughs> so, smoke weed, perform in front of the people, gain an extra fan, touch the fans. You know, this is more like of a, I don't know how you really can explain it, but like a, a fan rapper type of thing. I really can't explain it, it's weird. Like, all the fans seem like they wanna rap too, you know what I mean? It's kind of weird, so it's cool to touch them and see where they coming from. Hear a couple of bars, they gonna spit at you. They take their demo and listen to it. Shit, it's cool. What up, Schoolboy Q, Backwood Q, Ambrosia for Heads. Give me some head. <laughs>